This is called a teachability bell curve, okay? And down here is uh, the mental state of the student, whether they are, and it goes from arrogance, cynicism, skeptical nature, uh, a teacher, a student, and then up to being trusting, then being gullible, and then being outright naive. Okay, so the, that's the whole spectrum of teachability. The best position to learn is up here at the top of the bell curve. This means you will learn the most if you are here. And that means you're in the balance between teacher and student. It means that you're somewhat skeptical and you're also somewhat trusting. It means that you're able to hold a proposition in your mind without accepting it or rejecting it immediately. It means you will consider the information with an open mind, okay, somewhat trustingly, but also somewhat skeptically, all right? That's going to be the mental state we want to attempt to keep during the duration of this seminar, and therefore you will be in the best position to learn. Of course, as we already said, the poorest positions to learn, the, the things that... If you're in these mind states and arrogance and rigid skepticism and naivete and gullibility, you're, you're not going to take very much away from this seminar, okay? So we want to remain at the top of that bell curve if at all possible. Human beings should consider with great care where their information comes from, the source for the information. And this is because by refusing to present certain information, and by influencing people to dismiss, to dissuade them from looking into certain information because they're telling you that it's unimportant or unnecessary to consider, many modern institutions like media, like so-called education uh, institutions, are seeking to actually control human perceptions, or let's call it outright what it really is, to control the mind, okay? and therefore to limit what human beings may even come to understand, and therefore by limiting what they are coming to understand, they're actually limiting what they're able to do, what they're able to change, what they're able to create in the world. Okay, so very, you have to be skeptical of where your information comes from, and that's why I tell people at the very beginning in my lectures, do not believe me. The worst thing you could do is believe what I'm telling you. You need to look into it for yourself, and most of all, you need to do personal introspection to really feel inside of yourself whether this information resonates with truth. Everybody has that intuitive capacity. That also has to be turned on and, and engaged and used. All right? If anybody is coming to this seminar from the perspective of modern, organized, institutional bodies, meaning political thought, political agendas, political organizations, religion, religious thought, religious organizations. I'm talking about organized religion here, okay? What I call scientism, not real science, but scientism, science as set up by institutional bodies to be rigidly skeptical belief systems that blot out anything that could possibly say anything to the contrary of their pre-existing beliefs. I call that scientism, okay? And of course, the New Age movement, which you could group that in with religion. It's just enough, it's for those who don't fall into the religious mindset, this is an alternative religion proposed for them and they call it the New Age movement. And I tell people, uh, Please, don't think uh, this is going to uh, concur with any of these belief systems, with any of these boxes for consciousness. This presentation is going to shatter these boxes. It, is, it stands outside of all of these, because these are limiters for perception and thought. They want to put, place everything in a box, say nothing outside of this box is fit for human consumption, so do, do not go there. And as a result, they act as a mind control influence. The other and biggest limiter of, um, of the per human perceptions and the mind, and ultimately of our behavior, is money itself. If you want to talk about the biggest religion, if these, these other religions aren't big enough and powerful enough for you, there's the one that is the ultimate power 
in the world, the ultimate religion, the God of this world, if you will. Okay? So what I'm basically saying here is if you're already in a mindset approaching the, uh, let's call it the um, uh, discovery of reality or the exploration of reality from any of these perspectives, you will be sorely disappointed here today by what you're going to hear because the information here falls well outside of any of these institutional limiters for consciousness, okay? The requirements for creating change and the role of knowledge. Let's talk about these concepts for a moment. Human beings everywhere say that they want certain things in their life, and they say that they want certain things to be present for all humanity. Okay? We say we want certain conditions to be present for ourselves and our species as a whole. And, and we, we say we want things such as happiness, health, peace, prosperity, freedom, etc. And all these things are great things to aspire to. And we say we want them. Most people will say and tell you we want these things. All right? However, you know, I don't really feel that they're truly being honest with themselves. Okay, they'll say they want them, but then when you tell them, well, those aren't automatic conditions. They don't just magically manifest. Okay, there are requirements for obtaining these conditions. Okay, and people wouldn't say they want these conditions if these conditions were already omnipresent, right? They're saying that they want something because they don't have it at all, or at least in fullness, right? So when you tell them there's requirements, for obtaining them, many people will say, oh, well, you know, I may not be willing to go there. I may not be, I may not want to exert that much effort. And they believe that somehow they're going to magically get these things, right? Well, this is what the real laws of attraction are about. It's explaining conditions that you want don't just automatically manifest by thinking of them or just having a feeling about them. This is a new age deception. There are requirements for obtaining the conditions that we say we want. Requirement exists in nature. It does exist. If you want something to be different than the way that it already is, than the default conditions, then requirement exists. If you're okay with things being the way that they are now, requirement doesn't exist. There are no requirements to creating change. You just accept the default conditions the way they are now and go on with your existence and accept it's going to be this way and possibly get worse. But if you want real change to happen, requirements exist. And this is what many New Age teachers will not tell you or they'll outright deny that requirements exist for creating real change. Specific requirements exist in order for human beings to obtain the conditions that they say they want. If the requirements for obtaining those conditions are not met, those conditions do not just magically manifest by magical means automatically. That's not how it works, folks. Uh, you know, and that bursts a lot of people's bubble right off the bat. This is a key concept to understand. So what are these requirements? We need to know certain things. Knowledge is required. Knowledge. Knowledge that will spur us to action. That's what's required. Okay? Since human beings as a species do not already have the things that they say they want. And again, at least not in fullness. If we want to split hairs, we could say we have a, a modicum of what we say, we may say that we want, but we don't have it in the fullness that we will say that we want it, as, especially societally, globally. Okay? So since we don't already have these things, it follows logically that the knowledge of the requirements to obtaining these things, okay, either must be absent, they are not, the knowledge is not present anywhere, or if it is present, if that knowledge for obtaining those things, the requirements for obtaining those things, if that knowledge is present, then it must be willfully being ignored. It is here and yet people aren't paying attention to it. They aren't taking it in and accepting it and doing anything with that knowledge. So they're ignoring it because it's uncomfortable. As long as this knowledge continues to remain either unknown or ignored, 
the manifestation of the desired conditions that we say that we want is impossible. Can not happen. It is an impossibility for it to magically, automatically manifest without the requirements being met. And that's what we're going to talk about here today. What are these requirements? What is this knowledge? This knowledge is occulted, meaning hidden. Okay, now, how many people here came here today thinking that they were going to hear information about the occult by a show of hands? Okay, about half the room, good. Okay, for the rest of the people, that may come as a shock. But what you have to understand right off the bat is that the word occult, it's simply derived from Latin, the Latin adjective occultus. Occultus in Latin means hidden, hidden from sight. And it's derived from the Latin noun oculus, which means eye, okay? The word ocular in English means related to the eye or related to sight or vision. So what the occult is, is something, it is a body of knowledge that has been hidden away for a specific reason. And we're going to get into what that reason is. Okay, so... Uh, from the, the term oculus or eye in Latin comes the verb occultare. Occultare means to hide, to conceal, or to keep secret. To keep hidden from the eye so that it cannot be seen. The information regarding natural law is occulted knowledge. It is knowledge that has been hidden from humanity. Okay? It has been, it's held by the few. Which, which is represented here at the top of this pyramid. You can look at this as a pyramid representing knowledge or ignorance. At the top of the pyramid, you have knowledge. It's the, the highest, higher you go in the pyramid, the more knowledge. Okay? But the pyramid tapers because at the top, very few people understand that information. Very few, few people have that knowledge and have actually integrated it into themselves to the, to the point where it becomes understanding. All right? Down here, you have no knowledge, the ignor ignorant masses, okay? And, and up here, you have the people who are in the know, right, who have this knowledge about how natural law works and are actually using it for a certain reason. We're going to get to that next, what that is. So please, as you go through this seminar, please keep in mind, if I ever use the term occult, all I'm talking about here is hidden knowledge. That's what it means. Occulted knowledge is hidden. Now, why would anybody want to hide knowledge that is extremely important? Well, there's a very specific reason, all right? But before we even get to that, we have to talk about what is this occulted knowledge, 